all right youtube what's going on welcome back to the channel today we're going to go ahead and get started on getting the intake side off of the uh, slt 500 the 500 jet ski so we can get this motor out so let me go over what we're going to do we got to get the air intake off these are phillips head screws i'll get those off you're supposed to have one here several are missing one here one here one there one there one there so let me get that cover popped off and i'll show you guys the next step we got the cover loose the screws as you can tell this covers all busted to hell that will not be going back on i have a different plan get your screen out now i believe these are 10 mils get back to you guys in a second let me get my new side ratchet and let's give her a try all right guys as you see in my last video i bought this cordless side ratchet on amazon so let's see how she works just like butter okay guys and there you have it take all these bolts out we'll get some more plastic bags as i've mentioned in this video several times bag everything tag everything uh these probably aren't going to be used i'll be honest with you guys when i get this put back together i'm going to run uh air cleaners off the uh 780 so it'll be individual and i am going to jet the carbs different don't worry we'll have a video going over all that Th this does have the upgraded uh three outlet fuel pump i'm gonna have to get that off there uh looks like they got 7 16 on there possibly on this so i'll be right back at you as soon as i get that off okay guys here's the bottom of the intake piece Got the fuel pump off. They got a nice mount on this. It's a shame I'm not going to reuse it. Uh, we'll see how things go. The next step is going to be getting those carbs off and these fuel lines. Give me a little bit here to figure out how those carbs come off. It's been such a long time. I honestly can't remember. I'll get back in the video, or I'll get back to this video in a second. It's going to be a change of plans. I can't promise if this is going to work or not, but I think I'm going to pull the motor out with the carbs on. Uh, we're going to see how that goes. I, I Not 100% positive it'll come out with them on, but let's go for it. So first things first, loosen up your two 10 millimeters down here for your choke and your throttle. You can see them down there, right here. Get these loose so you can drop the cables out. Once they're loose, they're slotted, just back the top nuts off, and you can drop them out. For your choke it's going to be a flathead right here all right as i said loosen your flathead for your choke you have to take it all the way out just enough to get the cable to slip out just like that now be careful you don't lose your nuts and your washer see these slide right out and there's your cable the top nut off now for the throttle slip it down and just slip it out just like that slip it up and slide your throttle cable out just like that that's disconnected get the fuel lines off for this video guys since i plan on uh, rebuilding the fuel pump and putting all new lines i'm just going to cut these lines uh you got your vacuum line then you got your feed line to so the carb uh, my plan is i'm going to leave the carb lines on and leave the vacuum line on the motor so i just cut the main supply line and I'll just lay the fuel pump up on top of here when I pull this motor out. And then we'll get it all apart on the workbench. And I'll tell you right now, that gas in there is no bueno. It does not smell good. All right, now that we got that done and off, the next step will be to get the engine lift over here. And we got to get these three quarter bolts loose that mount the motor. That one's already off. Get this one out down here. If I have to use a ratcheting wrench, it's buried down in there. And we'll get my engine lift hooked up. So let me get those nuts off and I'll show you how we're gonna lift this motor out of here. I want to add in here there is one more fuel line right here. It runs back to the tank and up to this fuel rail. Like I said, I'm just gonna snip it and put an all new on anyway. So let's get this out of our way. Disconnected. I think that's a return line. I'm not really 100 percent positive. Don't quote me. Don't uh, beat me up in the video if it's not. Also, all right, let me get those three-quarter motor mount nuts off, and let's get this motor out. 
One thing I did forget to mention is this drive shaft coupler. I do have the drive shaft out of this machine. I'm gonna take this band clamp all the way off, or hose clamp I should say. It's slotted on the bottom. Once you get this off, it'll slip right off for you. So let me finish getting this hose clamp off. I'm gonna replace that carrier bearing on this anyway once I get this thing going. There we go, got that off. And then you're just gonna tar it with one hand, guys, with the camera. So you're gonna slip this off. Just like that. There it is. Now the back of the motor is ready to pull out. So uh, one thing I did want to mention is if you're working on a ski and it's a super clean ski, take yourself some moving blankets or something on the sides here where you lay your crap, your tools, so you don't wind up tearing up the fiberglass. So let me get the engine lift. Or I'll show you real quick too. I'm going to run those three quarters off with my big Milwaukee. I'll show you. There's a tight fit in there with a three quarter inch uh, impact. I have a... Um, a long a deep wall socket on it but as you can see we're right up and out we got the two front ones loose I already did that side that side was easier over here now we got to get this back one it's down there you can probably see it let me see if I got a three-quarter inch ratcheting wrench I don't have a three quarter inch ratcheting wrench, but I was able to just get an open end in here and crack this loose. This last motor mount, bolt under, or nut underneath the carbs. So I'll get this off. And let's get that engine lift hooked up to this and see how we gotta disconnect the wires running to the stator, the oil line, and I think that's it off the top of my head. So I'm gonna get this off the rest of the way. It's almost off. These are short um, bolts coming up from the rubber motor mounts. Get this out of here. Oh, and also we're going to have to get the starter wire off the starter. The power wire. I didn't think about that either. And there is so much stuff laying down in this hall that people have dropped, guys. I don't know. The camera ain't showing it too well, but and I just dropped the washer. Here we go. Here it is. Right here. That's the last one. Let's get this thing hooked up. Before I lift this motor up, we gotta disconnect the wires coming out of the stator. I chased them. They come down on this side and they come up and around and they come into the top side of this um, electric box, the e-box. So I think I can take these two Allens out and disconnect it. Not 100% sure, I might have to crack the whole box open. Uh, let me get these Allens out and I'll get back to you in a minute. I was wrong on that. As you can see, this is just a seal for the wire, so I'm going to have to crack the whole e-box open and see how we go about disconnecting that. So these are 3 16 Allens I forgot to mention earlier. I'm just going to run them out for my quarter inch drive impact. Let me get them out and we'll see what we got when we get it open. All right, now that we got the e-box open, it looks like you're gonna have two wires that are gonna go to the board here. They're gonna be a yellow down here, you gotta disconnect. Right, right down in there, where my finger's pointing, this yellow wire and this brown wire right here. Looks like those two gotta come out and it looks like the rest are butt connectors. They're gonna pull apart. Well, let me get them undone and we'll see what we got. Now that your brown sensor wire right here is unplugged from up here, give you guys a good shot. I always take pictures of this stuff when I'm taking it apart. You can go ahead and pull this wire out of the box, just like this. It'll come out for you. Just be gentle. There's a lot of wires in there. Now the next one are going to be the butt connectors. I should just unplug everything, not everything, but more to get this undone. Let me see if I can set the camera up, guys, when I get this uh, all apart. To make this easier for you guys, I took the 3 16 Allens out of the CDI box right here. All those wires go into the CDI besides two. You got this red one. It's a jumper. It's going to plug into the top. And you got a yellow one right here. Those two got to come out. And it looks like this ground is going to have to come off to be able to slide those wires out. The rest of this is all going to unplug. They're color matched. This black one here doesn't have to come out. That goes to the coil. All the red, the green, the white. It looks like 
the yeah the red green white blue and red and the red and white are going to get disconnected and then uh, this ground here is going to have to come off here and come off there and come out what I did is I left my coil wires plugged in and I just put one screw back in my CDI now you got to get this 532nd allen out down here for this last ground and once this ground is out then we'll be able to pull all the stator wiring out of this box and I'll show you how it comes out this is good, what it's going to look like when you start pulling it out. You've got to be careful with it. I had to be gentle working the wires. You don't want to tear them up. And there you have it. That's going to be your stator wire and your wire for your, I believe, your temp sensor. So that's out of the e-box. What I'm going to do is, I just want to give you a heads up too, the e-box is full of dielectric grease, so you're going to get a mess. My hands are completely covered in grease. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently set this e-box back together and just put two of the Allen heads back in it. 